FabFilter Pro Q3 is one of my favorite mixing and mastering plugins. In today's video, I'm gonna show you five ways I use the plugin in my mixes every single day. But before we do get started, if you're interested in my mixing mastering presets or services, make sure to check me out at mixandmastermysong.com. Let's go. All right, so the first way I use it is by notching out frequencies. I'm gonna show you this vocal from my buddy Trip Carter and we'll work through what I do to clean up the mud in this vocal. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'm going to go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. So it sounds really good, but there is this kind of muddiness. Uh, I'm hearing it around 500 hertz. So let's try to clean it up. And this is when I start using it for notching. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'm going to go the whole way or go no way. So I know it's around 500 that I'm hearing it. And then once you dial in that area, then you can switch to the headphone and listen to make sure that's exactly what you're hearing. So more down here seems to sound a little bit of that woofiness that we're trying to get out of. Let's hear it before and after. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'm going to go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. Losing my control inside the function. And you can hear it cleaned it up. And sometimes by pulling down uh, some of the mud, it almost sounds like you've brightened the vocal up. And that's something to take note of. Sometimes reducing frequencies is much better than boosting a bunch of high end. All right, so the second way I use FabFilter, and this is building upon the notch that we just did in the first step, is with dynamic scrubbing, as I like to call it. And so what I do here is I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna hold and click on my mouse. So you'll see the frequency spectrum turns blue and it'll start showing me frequencies that are poking out in this vocal that might not be uh, something we want to happen. So let's take a listen. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'm gonna go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. Losing my control inside the function. I've been empty for some years. So I overdo the mission for some bliss. Okay, so as you can see, while those frequencies were poking up, I was going up and dragging down those frequency areas. And so we have, you know, 540, kind of the same area we were before, uh, 1,200, and then 11,400. If you hear a noise in the background, that's my dog scratching at his bed. Anyway, what I'll do after that is select them all, and then I'm going to hit Command and click the Gain button, okay? And so that just puts them all back to zero. Next, I right-click, go to Make Dynamic, and then you'll see they've all been notched like this. And then you can just pull these down a bit. I usually like to start with, you know, negative six, and then we can work from there. So let's take a listen to this before and after. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'm going to go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. Losing my control inside the function. I've been empty for some years. So I overdo the mission for some bliss. So that does sound quite a bit cleaner. Now, one thing that you have to be careful when you're doing it this way is sometimes you can make things sound cleaner, but also lose the life of the vocal. I don't think we're quite there with this one, but maybe this frequency might be too much. So now I'll go through and, and use the headphone and just solo out the bands and just make sure it's something I really want to get rid of and then maybe bring back that uh, dynamics so that we're not compressing it so much. Halfway in and out. Empty nothing. I'ma go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my deflection. I've been empty for... So let's hear it before and after now. Halfway in and out. I don't want to halfway empty nothing. I'ma go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. Losing my control inside the function. I've been empty for some years. So I So that's better. It's cleaning it up, but it's not taking it down too much. Okay, so the third way I use FabFilter Pro Q3 is for filtering. And yes, you can do the normal thing of, you know, getting rid of some of the rumbling in your low your vocal, which you know we all know. Um, or if you have a vocal that's too bright, you can bring it down here. A lot of times I'll use a low cut for carving out some of the rumble and a synth that I don't want to get in the way of the, the bass or the kick. Or if the synth is too bright, I'll sometimes filter it down with a real soft slope and do something like this to get some of the brightness out of the synth or a hi-hat or something like that. So you can use filters a ton of different ways. Another way that I really like to use them is for effects. And so 
let's take this for instance. I duplicated this vocal we were working on and have brought this filter down to, to this. So it's really just a very uh, steep low cut and high cut that's just letting a little bit of the frequency through. And then after that, I'll run it through all kinds of effects. In this case, we're just gonna use a little slap delay that I created, 70 milliseconds on one side, 190 on the other. It'll just give us a little slap sound, maybe bring the feed back down a bit. Now you could do this with the EQ here, but sometimes I just find it easier to just drag these this way and it just makes it faster way. You can grab these two and bring them that way too. And so now let's take a listen with this new filtered effect. Halfway in the night, I don't wanna halfway empty nothing. I'ma go the whole way or go no way. I got no control of my dysfunction. Losing my control inside the function. I've been empty for some years. And so there you go, you have an effect really quick. And what's cool about doing it this way is you can take out parts. So let's say we just want that slap sound to kind of be an effect at the end of this verse. I've been empty for some years. So I overdo the mission for some bliss. I've been empty for some years. So I overdo the mission for some bliss. <laughs> And that can be a really effective way to, to create changes between transitions or to build up choruses, you know, put a filtered vocal with a bit of reverb on it underneath the lead vocal in, in a chorus, and it will just make the whole song bloom when that chorus hits. The fourth way I've used FabFilter Pro Q3 is for broad stroke stuff. A lot of times it's just grabbing a little EQ point and just dragging around with a pretty wide cue to try and evoke this, a sound change to one of the instruments in the song. This might come from a lot of my mastering experience where, you know, in mastering, I tend to use real wide cues to just change the balance of something a little bit. Um, and also, I think, you know, if you look at the, the curves of old analog e equalizers, e even SSLs, the cues are pretty wide, even when they're tight. Um, so I found that when I just need to change something, doing a wide cue and going around to find it, is a real easy way to make that change happen fast. For instance, let's take a listen to this song here. And there's this sample right here, right? It's cool, but when I'm playing it with the mix, it's not quite cutting through. Like, so in that instance, I'd be in the middle of a mix. I will just throw on a fab filter and go to town on it. So really fast there, we were able just to not only turn it up, but just give it a bit more brightness to help cut through the mix a bit more. And this can work for anything. A lot of times I'll do this after, you know, I've done all my vocal treatment and I'm in the last 5% of my mix and my vocal just is missing some mid range or something. A, a big move I do a lot is just going in there and maybe boosting like a DB around uh, 3000 Hertz. And that will just make that vocal cut through the mix that much more. So when you're doing this broad stroke kind of stuff, I do suggest that you don't do it in solo. I actually suggest you don't do much in solo. But don't do this in solo and it will it will make it a lot easier to hear how it's gonna affect everything in the mix. Okay, so the fifth and final step is mid side EQ. You can use mid side EQ for all kinds of things. One thing is when you have like a stereo bass, for instance, you can do a low cut and then switch your stereo placement to sides, right? So now what this is gonna do is as, as we bring this filter up, it's gonna take all the side information out of the base and just leave the middle information. And this is great for if you have a, you know one of these super stereo uh, bases that is affecting your low end because there's so much width on the sides. A lot of times I'll filter that down for that. Sometimes you have to be careful with club songs because some of the subwoofers at big cl clubs are still mono. And so if there's a stereo bass, you'll lose some of the bass information unless you make sure that it's all mono. So this will effectively fix situations like that. Another way I use it is to create width on a final master. So you can do this, you can create a shelf and then we're gonna switch this to sides. And now all we're doing here is making the sides brighter and also turning up the sides by bringing up gain of an EQ, okay? So let me play this with and without of the whole mix so you guys can hear what it's doing. So that's a huge difference, right? Now, I would normally not do, do it that much, but if you bring this up to, you know, like 14, 
K in a, in a very small slope of you know a dB or two, then that might give you some width that you'd like as opposed to that dramatic width. Although I know some of you would love that 4 dB width. I know you would. So that helps a little bit. Another thing you can do is if you have like a stereo beat and that's all you have for the, the mix and the drums or the kick more, more so aren't, aren't hitting, you can switch this to mid and the low end. And get some low end out of just the middle, but leave the sides alone. So a lot of different things you can do to affect a mix, especially if you're limited on what you have uh, using mid side EQ. All right, so those are my five tips. Let me know if you guys got any other tips in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you're using Fab Filter. If you need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my courses and presets there too. Talk to you guys soon.